Hi everybody, it's Adam with heartvalvesurgery.com and we have a special surgeon Q&A for you today all about the advances in heart valve therapy and specifically we're going to talk, be talking about valve in valve therapies. Very fortunate to have on the line with me, I'm going to bring him in, Dr. Chris Malazri from Northwestern Medicine Chicago. Great to have you with us as always, Dr. Malazri. Uh, so everybody out there knows Dr. Malazri is a leading cardiac surgeon at Northwestern Memorial Hospital. He's also a professor of surgery at Northwestern University. In our community, Dr. Malazri has helped many, many, many patients. And particular to this discussion, uh, he has really helped up the folks, helped out folks like uh, John Gerlitz, who had transcatheter valve therapy, and Paul Powers, who had valve and valve therapy. So to get started, Dr. Malazri, could you maybe talk about why, out of all the things in cardiac surgery, why have you focused on valve therapy to be such an important part of your practice? Well, the treatment of valve disease is constantly evolving with new techniques for valve repair and minimally invasive approaches. And this is why I'm most drawn to valve surgery within cardiac surgery. Now, valve replacement has been a life-changing therapy for patients with stenotic and tight valves. But recently, valve repair is now a life-restoring procedure for patients with regurgitant and leaky valves, particularly for the aortic valve. Now, reproducible techniques for valve repair and devices to stabilize and restore the shape of the aortic valve has allowed many patients to live without the need for an artificial one. Moreover, the approach for valve surgery become less and less invasive with minimally invasive techniques as well as transcatheter therapies. The opportunity to innovate is the reason that I've focused on valve disease in my practice. Dr. Malazri, how have all these new medical advances change the way that you are able to treat defective valves with smaller incisions? Technology has allowed us to innovate in cardiac surgery and where previously patients had to have a full sternotomy scar, which is about an eight to nine inch incision sometimes down the middle of the chest. We often can do minimally invasive cardiac surgery through keyhole incisions. And just to put some um, light on some new devices, several devices have made minimally invasive cardiac surgery safer and reproducible. These include newer generation tissue valves, also called sutureless or rapid deployment valves, which can be placed with as little as three sutures. In addition, auto knotting devices, which secure stitches without the need to hand tie, have greatly facilitated valve implantation for the cardiac surgeon. But I think the most transformative device is the TAVR procedure with transcatheter heart valves. Now, these valves can be delivered on a thin tube through the groin without the need for open heart surgery. So these technologic advances have made the approach to cardiac surgery a lot less invasive. Dr. Malazri, can you talk about the patient benefits of these new minimally invasive approaches? Now, minimally invasive cardiac surgery and transcatheter heart valves is associated with an accelerated recovery. In particular, patients don't need to adhere to exercise restrictions that are often associated with a typical sternotomy incision. Now, this means that patients can be discharged as early as three days after open heart surgery and as little as one day after a transcatheter valve procedure and return to full activity after just two weeks. Dr. Malazri, how have transcatheter devices changed your thinking specific to the long-term management of valvular disease for patients specific to their valve selection. Now, TAVR or transcatheter aortic valve replacement is, in, is emerged as the preferred choice for elderly and otherwise high risk patients with aortic valve disease. But what some people don't know is that TAVR has now become the preferred treatment for patients who previously had an open valve replacement with a tissue valve, but now has seen that tissue valve degenerate over time. This is otherwise called the valve and valve procedure because it entails placing a brand new transcatheter heart valve within the previous tissue valve, which is now failing. The TAVR valve and valve procedure, I think is an excellent choice for our patients who previously had a tissue valve replacement who now need that valve replaced. 
Dr. Malazri, what exactly is a valve and valve procedure? Yeah, the valve and valve procedure resembles the TAVR procedure in that it involves a valve which is loaded on a small plastic catheter that is delivered through the groin without open heart surgery. Now the valve and valve procedure is meant to be placed within an old tissue valve, in particular, uh, either the aortic mitral tricuspid or pulmonary position, but the most common valve that is affected is the aortic valve. And that's probably the number one procedure that we perform the valve and valve procedure for. Are these valve and valve procedures performed regularly at a leading cardiac center like Northwestern? The valve and valve procedure can be performed in the aortic mitral pulmonary and tricuspid position. And it is the preferred treatment choice at our center at Northwest Memorial Hospital for patients who previously had a valve replacement in the aortic and mitral position. We see these patients regularly and for those with a degenerating tissue valve and appropriate anatomy is evaluated by a CT scan, the valve and valve procedure is our preferred treatment choice. Now, not all patients can get the valve and valve procedure and we should keep these in mind. Uh, these include patients who previously had a mechanical valve or patients who have now an infected valve or patients who have a leakage around the valve itself. These are patients that we be excluded from the valve and valve procedure. Dr. Malazri, I'm, I'm sure patients are want to know how other patients are doing after they have a valve and valve procedure. Can you maybe share some of your surgical outcomes uh, after these valve and valve procedures are performed? The valve and valve procedure has led to a much reduced uh, recovery time. And most of our patients get discharged the next day. The procedure itself can be done not only without open heart surgery or cardiopulmonary bypass, but we do these procedures without general anesthesia, otherwise known as twilight medication. The patient is awake, sedated, but awake, and I think that greatly facilitates discharge to home. And patients uh, can expect a return to full activity within two weeks. It's amazing what you and your team are doing over there with the transcatheter technology, now the valve and valve technology. I guess I, I just got to ask you this question is, what else should patients know about valve and valve procedures? The valve and valve procedure is currently FDA approved for patients with failing tissue valves who are considered high risk for open heart surgery. Now for those patients who are at lower risk for repeat open heart surgery, trials have recently completed for aortic valve and valve, but are still underway for patients with failing mitral valves. Um, and these trials seek to demonstrate the safety and efficacy of TAVI for this patient group. Now, we are um, investigator in the Partner 3 valve and valve trial. In our group, we'll be presenting data on the low-risk patients undergoing aortic valve and valve later this year, and really, really excited to see those results. So, Dr. Malazari, I'm sure the patients are wondering, what might be your best piece of advice for those folks who might have a tissue valve that's failing and are considering a valve and valve procedure? I think patients should consult their cardiologist and cardiac surgeon who previously did their operation, but also get tests to see if they're anatomically suitable for the valve and valve procedure. And what's most important is to find a center that can both offer a valve and valve procedure, which is FDA approved and commercially available, but also offer innovative new devices, which can be offered under a clinical trial. Dr. Malazari, on behalf of all the patients with heart valve disease, I'd like to thank you and the entire team at Northwestern Medicine for your ongoing pursuit of healthy heart valves through new technologies, new advances, and new techniques like valve and valve procedures. And as we always say here, keep on ticking. Thank you very much, Adam. <laughs>